I keep trying to think, what can I put these paint inlays on? And I'm starting to come up with like, what can't I put these paint inlays on? Today, I'm doing a lampshade. I'm using the Iron Orchid Designs Grisout's Wall Paint Inlay and DIY Paint Aviary. I've got uh, a lampshade that already had been um, painted and sealed because I think I had planned on doing transfers on it. Here's how I started. I flipped it opposite of that and I've got one section applied opposite. Here's one of the birds and it, it continues onto the next sheet. So I'm going to put this guy on here and I'm going to double check. I've taken off most of the things that trail off the edges. I'm just going to put it down as far as that will go into my wet paint. Oh, shoot. I did not think this through. All right, look, look what I did. Working too fast. Indeed, I should have put the top on first. Let's see if I can. Nope. All right. It's already starting to release. See how quickly the DIY paint works? So. I have to, I'm going to cut off this right here. I'll use it somewhere else. I'll make it work. This is called improvising when you make dumb mistakes. Saving that. Right here. With a little bit of overlap. And that is actually in the wrong. Ugh, that's in the wrong spot too. Let's slide. So you do have a little bit of time with movement. And there we go. All right, I'm only looking at that line right there. Phew. Make sure it's wet. And now I'm still using this. This is honestly the best way. I'm going to use my brayer. Put my arm right in there. This is the pigment. That's the non-pigment side. Let's make sure that I've already cut all the edges off. Starting at the bottom, making sure I'm not upside down, hello. Again, something I would do. Laying that right into the wet paint. All right, I'm going to dampen that. Now for this project, unlike some of the others that I did, I'm not going to worry about these areas that are, don't have any paper pressed into it right now. Here's what I've got so far. And it even looks good with the paper right on it. So let's you want to re-dampen your carrier sheet here. And I want to make sure to get all of it. And this is going to uh, loosen up the fibers so that we can pull this back off the lampshade. Uh, it should come up easily. If it's not, it's usually because you've not gotten your uh, paper wet enough to pull back. Now, I know already that it is going to be very textured and leave spots where it went in heavily and some where it didn't go in at all. And I think it would be less like that if you didn't use a textured lampshade, but mine is textured. All right, let's see. Ooh, ooh, ooh. How beautiful is that? It's coming off very easily. I'm, I'm barely pulling on this. There's no resistance, and that's important. That's how you know you've got enough water on and you've applied it correctly. Oh, look at all those little wrinkles. Love, 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 love. Okay. Let's look at this. Because the material is so textured, um, I don't think I'm really going to get a second use out of this inlay. Uh, I'll try it, but I can tell by looking at it, there's really not much pigment left on there. 
But this is also one of those projects that you can do in pieces, right? You can take pieces of it. You don't need to use like a whole pack. It's another way to split up those eight pages. I think that looks awesome. All right, so that I'm going to see if I can get that. I'm not sure why that did not transfer that one little leaf. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can just play and get that leaf to go down. I can still see the pigment on the sheet, so. Maybe I missed the paint there. You know, decoupage paper. I'm not going to get another imprint out of this, but I'm going to save those and decoupage them on something. Why not? Let's give it a try. Alrighty. And one last, last little, let's see if we got that to transfer. So I'm very gently grabbing this. I am going slowly, mostly for visual effect, because isn't that awesome? It's such like instant gratification. I love it. Um, you can see that I, I really don't, I don't have any paper left in this. If you had to pull hard and then you were, pull your paper off hard and it wasn't coming off easily, and then you went back to look at all of this and you saw, you can actually see the fibers. So to avoid that from happening, you just need to make sure your paper is wet enough. Now, it's pretty runny, obviously, because it's water and top coat. So it's definitely runnier than usual. But the point of doing um, this part is that I'm trying to uh, encapsulate the pigments in the paint inlay so that I can brush on a sealer without smudging the pigments. Now, if you are somebody who sprays all the time, this, this step instead of what I just did could be um, using your spray sealer and spraying it and calling it a day. Uh, but I don't really use spray sealer, so I'm using my big top in a bottle with water. I think if you guys understand the concept behind this and how the pigments and everything works, you're gonna jump in and you're gonna wanna play with these because there are so many things you can do. So under for me, understanding why I'm doing this step helps me answer questions later on, do I have to do that step again or can I do it differently? Well, the point is to seal in your pigments. There's different ways that you can do that, right? So you don't have to do it the way I did it. You can do it by using your smell spray poly. parts of all of this is teaching how to use the products so that you can uh, troubleshoot and be successful. Uh, and what I want to show you is uh, what it looks like when you have your inlay taken up off of an area 
next to an area that had no inlay on it. Um, you guys have seen me in a lot of my projects where I'll take the blank paper from uh, the inlays and put it down into paint so that it does the same lifting. See here, this had the inlay and when it came up, it lifted and it's showing my color underneath. So all of these areas that had no paper on it, they look uh, different. I wanna blend that in. You could be done with it. I just want to illustrate why I usually do that. Uh, so I've got a few options. Obviously I can leave it or what I can do is uh, go in with some of the crinoline, which is my base coat, uh, pounce it a little bit so that I get this look uh, all over this, that'll help blend it, okay? Or I can take a glaze, if I wanna glaze the whole thing, this has already been sealed at this point, I could glaze it, it would help blend that in. Or I can go in with this green paint and just try to cover up a little bit of that white. And that last one is what I decided to do. I'm afraid it's gonna um, look more spotty when the light bulb is on. And so that's why I'm going in to change it. when I try to talk. In a passenger van Dreaming of when I'd ever begin To start 